You know, it's funny. I was talking to uh, Rich Gaspari recently, and you know, Rich is. Uh, in, I actually, I thought that he was the first bodybuilder who opened his own supplement line, but he corrected me. He said that you were the first one that opened Labrada Lebr Nutrition. I think we opened the about the uh, about the same time. Yeah. Was it difficult for you to transition from being competitive, you know, professional bodybuilder into a uh, a CEO of a company and really building a company from the ground up. Yes, yes, it's it's funny that you asked, uh, but yes, it's uh, very challenging. You know, because uh, just because you're a great bodybuilder doesn't mean that you're going to be a great business person. And so I really had to learn. You know, uh, essentially in the school of hard knocks. You know, I I felt I uh, feel that I've always had a good sense of. Um, of what works. I've had a good sense of business sense and that type of thing, but I've probably have made every mistake in the book, you know, when, when it comes to, uh, uh, running a business. So I, you know, I learned and, uh, but the, the one thing again, uh, that, uh, has always been for us, the most important thing is the customer, you know, and, uh, by putting the customer first, uh, that I've always used that as, as our compass, you know, but yeah, the transition uh, was uh, was difficult. Uh, it took uh, it took uh, several years to get the company off the ground, and uh, you know, and get it obviously to build it to what it is today. Uh, it's just been a labor of love over the last twenty years. Mm -hmm. I see. So, what are the prediction for this year's Olympia? You know, there's so many great athletes that are uh, that are coming up. So, um, you know, we got Cedric uh, on on his way up. Uh, we've got uh, that new Australian fellow who was, who was a sensation at the Arnold. And, of course, we've got the perennial champion, Phil Heath. You know, um, so uh, he's, he's always uh, tough to beat if, uh, if he's in condition. So, you know, I, I think it'll be real interesting to, uh, to see how it shakes out this year with, uh, with, with those guys. But um, if, if I had to, um, you know, if I had to, uh, my, my money's still on Phil Heath. This is a man that knows what he's doing. But if my brain was in that body, I would focus not so much on putting in on any exercise, but just getting as superhumanly shredded as possible, you know, because I think uh, he already has more than enough muscle, you know, and if he can just keep building quality, uh, he's going to be hard to beat. Kevin Laroni recently announced that he's coming back to the Olympia. I heard about that. How do you feel about that? Don't put anything past Kevin because he's a great athlete, great athlete, great competitor. And I remember uh, back in the day when I was competing with him, you know, his MO uh, would be to take a break and you wouldn't hear much, and then all of a sudden he would uh, come back on the scene and uh, getting ready, and his body responds tremendously. So it'll be very, uh, uh, very cool to see uh, what kind of condition he gets into and how he does. Yeah, and, and I'm rooting for him. Do you think he can be in a top five? It'll be interesting to see. I hope he does because I like Kevin, and I think he's a, a, got a great physique. You know, the laws of nature, well, we'll see whether those prevail or not because he's almost 50 years old. So it, it is tougher. You know, a 50-year-old body is not a 25-year-old body. Do you think that's going to start a trend of uh, retired bodybuilders coming out of retirement and uh, trying to compete again? Uh, you know, I think, I think the bug hits us uh, from time to time. You know, I'd be lying to you if I told you that it hasn't crossed my mind you know, at times, but, uh, at 56, you know, um, I, I know that the best use of my time now is to help the guys that are coming up, you know, like my son and Sergio and, uh, and other athletes out there. Those are the kind of things that I like to do now, you know, just dedicate myself to helping the, uh, to helping the guys. So Oliva, you know, Sergio told me that, you know, he never had that relationship with his father, you know, they had a very kind of turbulent relationship. So he said that he's always great to see, you know, your chemistry with your son. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, been a really, really rewarding experience. Uh, you know, actually, uh, Hunter and I were part of a, a photo shoot that we did with uh, Sergio Jr. Uh, a couple years ago in California for Flex Magazine. That was a, a like a next generation type of of uh, photo shoot you know so they're both of cuban descent you know both uh, descended from bodybuilding champions and uh you know it was just a, it was a great time it, it, and so the answer is yes it's really nice to see these uh guys uh you know carrying the torch forward you know as uh, as us older guys uh, retire you know watching them carry the torch forward incidentally Vlad, uh my boy is going to have his first bodybuilding competition uh, in July at the Branch Warren Classic here in uh, in Houston, Texas. The really interesting thing about that is that Branch Warren himself got his start at my bodybuilding show, my NPC bodybuilding show, 25 years ago here in Houston. And now my son is getting his start at uh, uh, at the at the Branch Warren show. Do you think Hunter will become professional? 
get his pro card? That's a great question. You know, it, uh, only uh, time will tell. I think he's got great genetics. I think uh, he's uh, got great m uh, muscle mass, great symmetry. Um, I haven't seen him dieted down yet, so I don't know how muscular and how defined he's going to be, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Absolutely. How do you think the sport progressed uh, from the time where you were competing, you know, to where it is right now? I think the sport is more exciting because it's more inclusive. With the introduction of the different categories, the physique, and now the classic bodybuilding categories, I think that it's going to open up the sport to even more people, and I think that's a very exciting thing. You know, in terms of what's happened in professional bodybuilding, you know, it, you know as well as I do that the, the direction that it's gone in is one that uh, places the most emphasis on massive muscle. And, you know, with that, I think that we've lost some things. You know, I think that we've lost sight of other qualities in the physique, you know, and, uh, you know, in fact, I was commenting to someone the other day, you know, that the average waistline of a professional bodybuilder nowadays is probably 36 inches, where back in my day, in the late 80s, it's 30 inches. You know, and, and, I, and I think that the reason for this is that they're having to work out with such massive weights, you know, in order to develop those legs and the, and the, and the back and whatnot, that it also thickens their torso. You know, all of the, uh, the muscles of the torso also thicken, you know, because they're load-bearing muscles or support muscles and that kind of thing. You know, I, I don't know that that's a positive trend. You know, I, I don't particularly care creatively for that style of physique. You know, and I'm hopeful that uh, it'll take a direction, you know, uh, towards a more symmetrical physique now. You know, uh, you know, we're seeing more symmetrical physiques now, like with Cedric McMillan, for instance, and, and uh, you know, and, and whatnot. Do you think the general audience, they, they want to see more of a mass? Mass is still very popular. You know, and I've always made the joke that people go to see the Mr. Olympia like they go to the zoo. They go to the zoo to see elephants and tigers. They don't go to the zoo to see cats and dogs. You know, so yeah, people love to see the extremes that a human body can be taken to. Everybody loves to see a man break a world record running 100 meters. Everyone likes to see what the extremes are that a human body can be pushed to in any sport. So I respect that, you know, but I will tell you that from a classical bodybuilding perspective and one of aesthetics and beauty, there's, there's a point of no return, you know, and I think we've crossed that, you know, so really we have to decide you know, uh, subjectively, what is it that uh, that bodybuilding is? What? How do you define that? My advice to Kevin in October of 2015, when he first was entertaining it, he was coming to me with a lot of frustration in his voice about the uh, unsatisfactory state of the efforts being put forth by the bodybuilders. And he's looking at it with a lot of disdain. I mean, the athletes are just, the quality is just not good.